Hello everybody, I'm KC and welcome to another edition of Let's Talk About. Today, let's talk about the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic episode, A Royal Problem. Okay, so what's this one about? Let's see. Starlight is called by the map to help... Yes! After all these years, the thing we have been praying and hoping for since the first episode and the demand has only gotten louder since, at long last, a Celestia and Lona focused episode! Not a brief moment of Celestia's vulnerability, not an episode about how alone and isolated Luna is after everything that's happened to her, a full-fledged slice-of-life conflict between the two royal sisters. Thanks Celestia, it's finally here! So, uh, we should probably talk about the episode itself now, right? Right, okay. As I was saying, Starlight, and only Starlight, is called to Canterlot by the map, which raises its own set of questions, but we'll let that slide for now. And it turns out the friendship problem is between Celestia and Luna. And right off the bat, we get one of the most charming things about this episode. I know the comics have delved into this, but this is the first time in the show itself that we've seen the day-to-day -day lives of the royal sisters. What they do, what they contribute when there isn't some giant magic thing threatening Equestria, and most importantly, what they don't do. The episode focuses on a very domestic issue, which is what makes it so refreshing for ponies who are held in such high regard, both by the ponies and the fandom. I think Twilight summed it up pretty perfectly. It's just, you said princesses and aren't the best in the same sentence, and it's making me nervous! Whether it's not acknowledging adding a touch of tranquility to the castle, or a hoof-made breakfast being completely ignored, each princess feels they aren't being appreciated by the other. It's not an earth-shattering conflict, in fact, if it wasn't the royal sisters, it would be pretty basic, but because it's the princesses, it doesn't need to be. What we've wanted all this time is a story that would give us a good look at Celestia and Luna as characters and as sisters. So what's Starlight's solution for all of this? Yeah. Powerful cutie mark magic, because that works so well in the past. You know, come to think of it, how come none of us ever questioned Starlight's cutie mark magic from her first appearance? As far as I know, no one bat an eye when it was revealed Starlight was using such advanced magic focused on cutie marks. Something even Twilight has struggled with on more than one occasion without any outside assistance. Well, I always had a theory that every unicorn specializes in one form of magic. Maybe this is hers. Just something to think about. Back to the Freaky Friday scenario, now Celestia and Luna have to spend the next 24 hours doing the other's duties, which they agree to try instead of banishing Starlight and throwing her in a dungeon in the place they would banish her to. Does anyone else think Starlight dodged a bullet here? Since Luna is first, let's start with her. I don't have too much to say about Luna's end, except that I think they handled the way she realizes Celestia has a tough job well. Not that each of her duties are particularly difficult, but to take on so much with no room to rest and still have to keep up the appearance of a cheerful, benevolent leader in all of her tasks. It's not an act, she does care and so does Luna. So much so that one slip up eats at her terribly and she desperately wants to fix it. But she needs to worry about the next pony in line because they need her attention and guidance just as much. I thought it was just going to be that Celestia had a lot on her plate, that's what the comics did, but I like the added touch that more often than not, Celestia doesn't get much time to herself or to walk away from her duties and think things through. I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that, and if you ask me, it was the perfect direction to take Luna's realization. But what about Celestia's side? Okay, this is where the episode goes from great to freaking amazing. First, there's the attention to detail in the dream world. I always love the imagery in the dream world, and here, we get to see this nice visual of all sorts of different ponies' dreams floating around Celestia. Some of the highlights include Cadence and DJ Flurryheart, Discord having a pillow fight with the smooths, Baby Applejack with presumably her mother, Flim and Flam doing their best Scrooge McDuck impressions, Princess Derpy, and my personal favorite, Dr. Hooves hiding in fear of a statue. I see what you did there, show. But the first dream she enters is Starlight's, and I like how they bring the biggest conflict into the episode. This entire climax takes place in Starlight's dream, so it's something she's creating, which makes sense. I have said before that I don't think Starlight trusts herself yet, especially with her magic. The fact that she was called by the map was certainly a confidence booster, and I do like that she keeps saying switching the princess's cutie marks might be a good idea. But here, we see she's still afraid 
afraid of the choice she made, that it could make things turn out for the worse, and given her history with magic, I honestly can't fault her for feeling this way. That, and Twilight keeps literally projecting on Starlight how worried she is about what might happen to the princesses. But it's in character, and absolutely hilarious in this story, so I can't say it's forced. But by the time Celestia interferes, Starlight has projected those worries into a battle between Nightmare Moon and... Yes! But can you handle... <laughs> okay, best episode, 10 out of 10. Do you see this? Do you see what they just did? Do you really think the show is ever going to reach this level of insane awesomeness ever again? No. No, it's not. So, let's actually talk about this evil Celestia. Daybreaker! Oh, okay. Daybreaker? She's supposed to be a personification of Celestia becoming power-hungry. The idea that she's so powerful she doesn't need anypony else to rule the kingdom, especially her more popular sister. On the one hand, this makes sense. Celestia did rule Equestria for over a thousand years by herself, pretty peacefully and with no help that we know of. But on the other hand, she has had her flank handed to her by villains on three separate occasions in the show. But let's just ignore that because this is cooler. I did like how, just like Celestia and Luna are opposites of each other, the idea behind the creation of Daybreaker is the exact opposite of Nightmare Moons. Instead of being a pony who craved attention and was created by Luna's loneliness, Daybreaker Breaker would have come into being by Celestia being consumed by her constant adoration and praise. It's pretty clever. Daybreaker was the best. I love her design, I love her motives, and I cannot get enough of Nicole Oliver playing this character. It's priceless! If this turns out to be her only appearance, I would be 100% okay with that. And she fights Nightmare Moon, it's the most exhilarating thing this show has done since Twilight's Brawl with T-Rex. It's so cool! But we should probably get back to the plot, because if we don't, I'm just gonna pull a Jack's Blade and keep raving about how badass this is. For very obvious reasons, Celestia gets overwhelmed by such a big threat in a situation she isn't familiar with, and tries to get Luna to help. But because Luna still has Celestia's magic, there's nothing she can do. So, to all of you who complained about Celestia not helping her sister and do Princess's Dream of Magic Sheep, there's your reason. That's why she couldn't help Luna get rid of the Tantibus. You happy now? And I like that instead of having Celestia try to keep a calm demeanor for the sake of the ponies around her, we see her break down after realizing how tough Luna has it. That she may not have as many duties as Celestia, but the ones she does have are huge and even scary, and she has to do it all by herself. Also, can we take a second to appreciate how well they animated Luna's expressions here? During Celestia's entire confession, she goes from concern for her sister, to the realization of what Celestia is really saying, to appreciation and love at hearing her finally say such wonderful things about her. It's just a nicely done moment, and Luna is about to return the favor by returning the sentiment to Celestia and giving her the encouragement she needs to get through this nightmare. And we get what is probably the most shocking moment in the entire episode. Celestia saves the day. Yes, after 152 episodes and who knows how many embarrassing defeats, Celestia finally gets to show her strength and stop the evil sisters from consuming Starlight's dreams. It's quick, but it's epic and about freaking time. So the episode ends with the two sisters reconciling, Starlight completing her first mission, and one last Twilight freakout. Honestly, between Twilight being so anxious and the sisters back and forth during their little sibling rivalry, this was probably the hardest I've laughed at an episode since Make New Friends But Keep Discord. Overall, this episode was so worth the wait. Fans have been craving an episode focused around Celestia and Luna since day one, and if you ask me, this episode was a great way to fulfill that need. Starlight's first mission was a great choice, Twilight is absolutely hilarious the entire time, and even if the plot may not be anything mind-blowing, except for, you know, that, I think that works to the episode's advantage. To me, having such a common plot revolve around the two most powerful ponies in Equestria was part of the charm. When I was watching this episode, I realized this was really the first time I've seen Celestia and Luna talk to each other like siblings. They bicker, they banter, and during this whole mess, they try their best to understand the other, which is one of the more relatable conflicts you could give to two sisters who are so drastically different. And Nicole Oliver and Tabitha St. Germain are given such a wide array of scenes and emotions to 
to work with than they usually are, it highlights their performances even more, to the point that it may be my favorite performances from both of them in the show so far. I could see some people wanting something more from a story we've been waiting so long for, but as far as getting to know Celestia and Luna more as characters, this gave me exactly what I wanted. That and Daybreaker. Daybreaker is best princess. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time.